Hello, and welcome to this guide on how to get started using the Cybercrime Underground General Intelligence Requirements Handbook, or CUGUR. In this video, I'll briefly introduce the core components of the GUR and give an overview of how you can start using it for your intelligence planning. The CUGUR is a reference tool to help synchronize your intelligence efforts with the requirements of your stakeholders in your organization. It also provides a step-by-step -step checklist for implementing the GUR framework using a complementary intelligence planning process. This process, outlined here, comes with an interactive workbook and several templates and samples to guide your journey. For more information about the origins of the GIR framework, the common challenges it addresses, and for your copy of the intelligence planning resources, visit our blog or contact us at intelligence at intel471.com. The GIR handbook is organized in six parent categories, representing popular areas of interest for collecting cybercrime intelligence. Each category contains five components. The first lists the business units or intelligence stakeholders and the use cases that are most commonly supported by a particular GIR section. These lists give Intel planners a starting reference point for identifying requirements if stakeholders and use cases are already known. Next, the actual list of GIR entries starts with a parent category code and a list of essential elements of information, or EEIs, that make up each GIR. EEIs are simply the who, what, where, when, why, and how questions applicable to each GIR. And this becomes important in future videos when we start defining our stakeholders' priority intelligence requirements, or PIRs. Lastly, Individual GIRs are nested in a hierarchy tree format with each sub-GIR inheriting the characteristics and EEIs of its parent. So for instance, under the GIR1 malware category, you will find more specific sub-entries like making Trojan malware and ransomware and others. Each of these have their own specific sub-definitions and EEIs along with those that they inherit from their main GIR1 malware category. At the time of this demo, the handbook contained about 180 GIRs nested under those six main categories. At the back of the handbook, you'll find a cybercrime glossary containing definitions and examples for each GIR. In subsequent videos, I'll demonstrate how to use this GIR handbook and the corresponding planning materials to define a collection plan similar to this that maps to the needs of your stakeholders and ultimately provides an opportunity to measure real value back to your organization over time. Thanks for watching.